and we're back with another SAT Biology video. Today we're going to talk about everything you need to know about cells. We're going to start our conversation about cells with the membrane and or the cell wall. Remember that while plants, bacteria, and fungi have cell walls, animal cells do not. Each of these cell walls are made of different substances, so in plants they're made of cellulose, in bacteria they're made of peptidoglycan, which is essentially a protein and a sugar, and in fungi they're made of chitin, which is a polysaccharide. Cell membranes are essentially selectively permeable phospholipid bilayers with an oily hydrophobic interior and a polar hydrophilic exterior. Things can get inside the cell in four different methods. We'll start with simple diffusion. So simple diffusion is the movement of a substance from an area of high to low concentration until they reach dynamic equilibrium, which is essentially a state where things are still moving, but it's relatively equal on whatever areas you're measuring. This method only works with hydrophobic substances that can interact with the cell membrane, such as oxygen, carbon dioxide, and cholesterol. Next is facilitated diffusion, which is the same concept, but with hydrophilic substances that can't just cross the barrier on its own. So these are helped by proteins in the membrane that form specific channels, or by proteins that bind and pull the substance through the membrane. An example of this is ions and glucose. Because no energy is required, both facilitated and passive diffusion are known as passive transport because they go along the concentration gradient from a higher to a lower concentration. Active transport essentially breaks all the rules of nature. This occurs when energy is used to move something against the concentration gradient, and this is important for things like action potentials and neuron firing. And active transport relies heavily on membrane proteins, and it is used for hydrophobic and hydrophilic substances. Lastly, and my favorite, is known as bulk transport. The easiest way to remember this is to think of Pac-Man, almost. So when something is moving into the cell through endocytosis, you kind of engulf the particle into a vesicle. And when you're moving something out, it's exocytosis, so you do the same thing but in reverse. Now the two types of endocytosis are phagocytosis, which involves bigger things that is known as cell eating, or pinocytosis, which is known as cell drinking. Next, we're going to talk about osmosis, which is still passive diffusion, but when you study the movement of water particles from one place to another. So in this classic situation, particles can't pass through the membrane, and so what would happen in this case is osmosis, so the water would move instead to equalize the concentration between concentration between the two areas. So in this case, water moves from a high to low concentration of water. This is biologically important if you think about the cells in your body and the fluid they're in. So if the cell is in a more heavily concentrated or a hypertonic solution, water will rush out of the cell to try to equalize the concentration in and out of the cell, causing the cell to shrink. If it is in a less concentrated solution or a hypotonic solution, water will rush into the cell to pretty much do the same thing, try to equalize the concentration in and out of the cell and this can cause the cell to burst or swell. Usually, it won't burst if it has a cell wall. If a cell is placed into an isotonic solution, you will have dynamic equilibrium because neither environment has more or less or water or a solute. Human cells are in an isotonic solution. They're isotonic to 0.9% of salt water. I'm going to delete that part. Human cells are with Human cells are in an isotonic solution, which is why our cells aren't constantly shrinking or bursting. Within the cell membrane is cytoplasm that surrounds the eukaryotes' organelles. So each of these organelles have specific functions that you should know for the test, starting with the vacuole. These are basically storage containers, as seen in our discussion on bulk transport. Next is the only non-membrane organelle, non-membrane bound organelle, which is the ribosome, and that's involved in protein synthesis. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum is used to transport material around the cell, and the rough endoplasmic reticulum transports primitive proteins that will become either membrane or secreted proteins later on. The Golgi apparatus sorts and packages proteins, and the double membrane bound structure, which is the mitochondria, performs cellular respiration, has its own ribosomes, its own DNA, and produces ATP. Lysosomes destroy any unwanted material, that's where the stem lyse comes from, which means to break. Centrioles are very important for cell division, which we'll talk about later. 
The nucleus is the double membrane structure that houses your DNA, and the nucleolus is essentially just the area where the majority of your DNA is. Thousands of chemical reactions occur within the cytoplasm, and with the help of enzymes called catalysts, they allow the reactions to go a lot faster than they would on their own. Each enzyme is extremely specific to its reactants, and they remain unchanged and reusable. Reactants fit on the enzyme's active sites, and they change to form products. Because enzymes are proteins, it's important that their environment is suitable, otherwise they can unfold or denature. Denaturation is caused by heat, pH level changes, or an increased level of salt. Lastly, coenzymes are really important in chemical reactions. If the enzyme needs it to do the job or if it would just help the enzyme to work faster, 